Many graduate students have specifically learned to write not using the first person voice. For students in journalism, my department, that may be because they've been trained as reporters, trained to be objective, get information and opinion from sources, but not give out their own opinion and their own narrative, and to produce a kind of reporter narrative. For graduate students in many other fields, it may be the scholarly paradigm, again, with a very particular discipline around sourcing and around phrasing to produce scholarly writing and scholarly narratives. And those are very valid forms, but what I want to talk about today is consciously making the decision to use the first person narrative when writing in your field and about your subject. And using the first person not as a uh, kind of therapy because you've got something you want to say and it's just pouring out of you, but making that decision because you think the first person can add something to the story that you want to tell or can change the story in a way that will give it the twist, the impact, the audience that you really want to achieve. So when you sit down to write a piece. What you want to ask yourself is, will a first person voice, a pers first person narrator, somehow help this story, make it more effective? Does speaking in the first person here allow me a structure, a tone, a way into the story that is going to add something and make this story more effective for the reader? And again, I want to emphasize that I'm not, even though I'm talking about, in many cases, writing about a subject that you know a great deal about and care a great deal about, I'm not talking about using the first person because of what it means to you, I'm talking about using the first person because of what you can make it mean to your reader. This is about trying to communicate as effectively as possible and trying to connect with a reader who probably doesn't know as much about the subject as you do. So let's say that you want to write about a particular topic and it's a topic about which you have strong emotions, or you have a personal connection, or you have a story to tell about how you even got to this topic. And it could even be a negative connection. It could be an effect, um, a story where you want to say, this is not something that I thought I was interested in or that I thought I was studying, but here's how it came to be something that I want to tell you about. One of the things you can do with the first person voice is use yourself as a kind of guide to escort your reader into the story, to lure your reader into the story, to bring your reader along into the question of how did this story come to be of interest? How was this discovery made? How and why was this research undertaken? And why might it be of interest to me and not just to a very small circle of people who would otherwise read it. So you can use yourself and your emotions and your passion and your interest and your anger. You can use all of that in a very carefully thought out way to bring your reader into the story and make your reader want to read it. One important thing to keep in mind about the first person voice. Again, just because you're using the first person, this is not your diary. This is not therapy. This is not private. All the rules of journalism apply if you're writing journalism. All the rules of scholarship apply if you're writing scholarship. What do I mean? I mean, even when you're using the first person, you need to treat your sources according to the same ethical code and according to the same strict code of accuracy. You need to quote accurately. You need to document where things come from and you need to treat your reader with the same respect. So just because you write in the first person doesn't change any of the rules of sourcing or attribution. Depending on where you're planning to publish this, of course, the format may alter, but the underlying rules and ethics and the way that you treat your topic and the way that you treat either live sources or scholarly sources that you're quoting from other texts, all of those rules still hold. And I think one of the interesting things that you can do as a journalist writing in the first person, as a scholar writing in the first person, is make sure that those rules are observed and then your first person voice acquires that additional authority that comes with the proper use of sources and attribution and then the inclusion of what is clearly your own personal voice.
A population of graduate students is a population of people with expertise, acquiring expertise in very specific topics. There's a reason why you're interested in what you study. There's a reason why it grabs you or nags at you or appeals to you. And sometimes using the first person is a way of communicating your interest, your passion, your excitement, and at the same time, telling the world about your topic. And I think if you can learn to selectively and effectively use the first person voice to do that, and you can learn that by reading people who do it well, you can come to the journalism department and take a course in writing for a wider readership, you can speak to people in your own department, but I think if you can do that, you can take the expertise that you acquire in your studies and find ways to communicate not only the information, but that underlying driving interest and passion.